This video has been like years in the making. I am so excited right now. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Artist at Play, and today is the day, folks. I am so excited. Today is the day when I get to show you my new studio. It has taken forever. You know, I've been talking about it for weeks, months, years. I don't even know how long. It took a long time, but it is here. It was worth it. And I just want to thank you all for your support and for being so patient. I would not have been able to do this without you. All the revenue I make from my art and from this channel goes right back into my business, into the channel and right here into this studio. So thank you all so much. Now, sorry about the dance. I can't help myself. I'm so excited. Let's get to it. Just a quick note before we jump into the fun part, here are some clips of what it looks like during us working on it. I don't have anything from before we started renovations, but this gives you a good idea of what we were up against. It needed new paint. We needed to fix the walls. We needed new flooring. We needed new windows. We needed new trim work. And the walls were a very dark blue gray. This used to be kind of a man cave turned storage, then turned studio. There's, it's been a lot of things over the years. We needed to fill holes. We needed bright white walls to make it easier for me to maintain what little light I do have, make it easier for filming. And my husband was a trooper. I wouldn't have been able to do this without Jason. He worked tirelessly after work. After working his full-time job, he'd go up, he'd put down flooring, he would paint and this was all while still maintaining the yard work and taking care of the chickens and, you know, taking care of me. And so none of this would have been possible without him. And here is the result. It is, it's a whole new place. It's, it's magical. And let's get into the details of this studio. Whew. Sorry, I had to put my hair up. It's a little hot up here. The air conditioner will be going in soon. I just didn't want that noise while I was recording. Okay. So I'm going to start off in one of the funnest areas in the studio and it's really not art related at all, but it's one of my favorite features and that is the bar. It kind of sounded bad <laughs> that my favorite feature is the bar, but it's a tea bar. I, I made it into a tea bar. I'm not up here day drinking. I swear to God, I'm not drinking and painting. <laughs> um, so this is a handmade bar. My husband and his best friend actually made this bar. It's probably over 20 years old now, so it's got some dings and, and stuff like that, but I love it. It's basically half a log and it's just finished so beautifully and I love it. It's always been one of my favorite features of this room and this room actually used to be kind of a, a man cave and now my husband has allowed me to use it as my studio. But before, I used to use this space right here kind of a storage like I had a lot of easels and light stands and things like that stored back here and so when I decided to renovate the studio space I was like I don't I don't want that I want to use it I want to utilize the bar it's beautiful and I love it and so that's what I did it's kind of like my little mini kitchenette slash tea bar and yeah I'm really excited about it and I think it's going to be a great addition to the studio and just kind of another spot that makes me happy. So I will show you around back here. So the first thing I wanna show you that I have sitting at the end of the bar is this fun little project I did when I was in college. It's based off the dinner party by Judy Chicago. And basically the assignment was to choose a movement in art and then make a place setting. And then we all had a dinner with it. And so I chose impressionism cause that's my favorite. And I was highly inspired by Claude Monet. So I made a clay water lily. I painted this plate to look like the design that Monet actually came up with in his own lifetime. He had designed some plateware. And then, so the yellow and the blue stripe are from his design. And then I added water lilies. And then my favorite part of the whole thing is this big plate that I painted to look like one of his paintings. It's probably one of my favorite projects ever. I even decorated my silverware with little water lilies. One of my favorite projects overall when I was in college. And so I wanted to put it at the end of the bar so it was like I was having dinner with Monet because he's my favorite. And then down in the back, I have my fun little tea kettle on my paint stained little table and a lamp. And then over here, I have my 
fairy house that you've seen me make on the channel. That was in my stores of the studio. Behind there is that air conditioner, which I desperately wish was in the window right now. <laughs> There's just come kind of some storage back there. And then on this wall, I have my strawberry sign. I love that it has an S because, you know, I'm an S. I know it stands for strawberry, but... And then I have this fun little cutout window here. This was also here behind the bar. I love it. And you can actually see our my main window through there. And you might recognize that from my stories of the studio. In my little sign. I have a fun tea sign. One of my favorite colored pencil drawings. I have it printed on tile. And then this, these are some of my favorite things. My sister made these for me. They're actually like pot holders, but they're in the shape of my dog. So this is Gus and Max, or now Maisie, because they look similar. She's a crochet designer. You're going to see a lot of handmade stuff up here. So this is from Blackstone Design. That's my sister. She actually designed these. So if you love to crochet, I will link her below so you can check out her patterns. And then I have... With enough chocolate, anything is possible. And those are words to live by. I'm living proof, really. And then behind the bar below, I have my tea and stuff like that. I have these fantastic coasters that my friend Jenna Clifford made me. She's a fantastic graphic designer, but she does a lot of beautiful wood burning as well. In here, I have some herbal tea. I have my sugar packets. Then I have my caffeinated teas. These are just kind of regular teas. And then my spiced kind of tea. My hot cocoa. Chocolate is always the answer, folks. And then in here, I have my fun little teaspoons. Look how beautiful those are. And an absinthe spoon with Van Gogh's face, because hell yeah. And then my honey sticks. And then just some fun mugs and things like that. And then this is, these are covers for my tea so that I can keep dust out of my teacups. Because normally I would use a travel mug when up here. But yeah, at some point I plan on putting snacks in here. Just a few. But that is the bar. And then this is kind of cool. I have some fun outlet covers and things like that with Van Gogh's artwork and Monet's artwork printed on them. And then Jason and I also hydro dipped some brand new outlet covers. So you'll see colorful outlet covers throughout the studio as well with different patterns and designs. So just kind of another shot of the window. I have my fun room divider that I keep here when I'm not using it. This has two of Van Gogh's paintings one on either side and it's made of canvas it's beautiful it's huge i'll show you i'll show you a scene of that and then some of my favorite knickknacks this is the only free like wall that i have so i haven't decided when i what i want to do with it yet i don't know if i want to make it a gallery wall where it's right next to the window i worry that making it a gallery wall would be you know i don't want the paintings to fade or anything like that. I might do a mural. I don't know. Let me know what you think. But that's the only flat wall I have. Okay, so around the corner from there is where I keep my artwork stored. It has its own little room. And I keep them covered with a drop cloth. And I actually got these really cool carts from Jerry's Artorama. And they keep the artwork separated so they don't dent or stick together. I'll pop up a picture of that and I will link that in the description below. I will try to link as much as I possibly can. But yeah, it kind of looks messy under there. But they're actually safer than they've ever been. Because I didn't have a good way to store them before. And they used to kind of stick together and things like that. And then I have some framed artwork over there. And a lovely picture of Frida that Jason got me. And then coming around the room. And this is another one of my favorite spots. This is my little reading nook. If you know me, you know I love to read about art and buy books almost as much as I like to buy art supplies and use art supplies. I just love reading in general. And so I thought it would be fitting to have a reading nook. I did have this reading nook before, but we replaced the shelves. We used to have these like janky little plastic shelves that really weren't holding up. And 
I found a fun chair cover and I just kind of revamped the whole thing. And I used to have it so it would go kind of like straight down the wall, but now I have a nice little, you know, set up so that it's actually a reading nook and I just love it. And so let's take a closer look. You may recognize these pals from my stories from the studio series on Instagram. This is my actual rocking horse from when I was little. It's handmade by my great grandfather, Chet, and he made a bunch of these for us grandkids and I played on that for hours when I was a kid I loved it and then these are handmade by my very talented aunt Patty and I've had those since I was a kid as well and then coming over here I have my fun little spooky shelf with my crystals and all that fun jazz and then I have this fun lamp this is actually my paint splatter and I had it printed on a lamp from Zazzle love it and behind there I have a an art print from a fellow artist and I will link her below as well um shout out to you JL she does some fantastic art and you can buy her art on fine art America so I will link that in the description below and then look at this chair <laughs> look at this chair folks oh my god I love this chair cover it is fantastic I get to hang out in the stars. And then you're going to find some quirky things around here. I got my pretty pink pet plastic flamingo. <laughs> and then I always watched Tom and Jerry growing up, so that's where that stuffy comes from. And then just a fun little place to set my tea while I'm reading. Fun little hope chest from Hobby Lobby from back when I used to actually shop at Hobby Lobby. And then... My shelves with all my art-related books. So many books. I gotta tell you though, this is my favorite shelf. This shelf here has all the fun games. Dice and my paint chip poetry, Bob Ross board game. Heck yeah. Yep. <clears throat> Lots of fun. I also have another artwork piece hanging. This is a print from Leah Sonier. She does a lot of cool surrealism. And then I got my pillow pets on the other side waiting to be told a story. This was handmade by my mom. She also likes to crochet because I love giraffes. And then this girl here, this is the crone. She is a sculpture that I made when I was in college. And it's actually a casting of me. That is me in there. My friend Jenna, who made the coasters I just showed you, her and Bob Katz, my professor at the time, helped me create this. So it's a casting of my body with plaster. We dipped, it, uh, we dipped a sheet in plaster and then hung it over my body. And then I had to try and sneakily break myself out. And then I did all this finishing the finishing touches because she was white before and I wanted her to look like she's been in a forest for a very long time so I added a lot more plaster and I used some black polyurethane and some green paint and she is one of my favorite things in the studio you're not going to see this in people's studios a lot of people are creeped out by her and I'm not going to lie when I'm sitting in this chair she's kind of staring into my soul but I'm not creeped out because it's me. I love it. One of my favorite projects ever from school. So yeah, that is my reading area. And of course, the tapestry. Between the pages of a book is a wonderful place to be. And I couldn't agree more. Okay, so across the way from the reading area have my fun carpet that my mother-in-law got me. Oh, I love it. And my runner from behind the bar matches that. And then this is kind of my paper slash canvas station. So over here, I have my paper cutter. This thing, let me tell you, one of the best investments we've ever made. Definitely highly, highly recommend. She's a beast. I love her. 
On the wall, I have some artwork there. That's a print. The framed one is a print. I can't remember the artist. I believe my grandmother got that for me. I love giraffes. And so, and then my sister painted that for me years ago. Sonia from Blackstone Design. She also is from She's So Creative. Does a lot of different crafting. And she made that for me a long time ago. And then below my paper cutter is where I keep kind of my specially shaped canvases, my rounds, my ovals, my octagonal. And then I also have some panels here. And then down here I have some cutting pads, um, another paper cutter. And then in behind is where I keep my larger canvases and things like that. And then here is this beast. This is my paper cart and what an investment, but boy, is she worth it. She is beautiful. I love her. I think she's made to be a Cricut cart, but I saw it online and I'm like, I have to have it. The top slides open and that's where I keep my smaller paper and canvases and things like that. And it could be used as a workstation. In behind it, this does move. It's on wheels, but it's so heavy right now that I don't dare to. But in behind, I have a little thing that I keep for drying my canvases and things like that. But there's also kind of like a spot behind there for bigger paper. So I have my larger paper back there. And then I have my more used paper out in these shelves. And then I have my smaller panels because I love my panels. And then in here, it's my either lesser used paper or like duplicates. So I usually keep, like if it's something that I use a lot of, I keep it out here, but I might have a pad of that stuff down here as well. Oh, I love it. This was, oh, I had all my paper on a really crappy like plastic shelf before this as well. And it was so nice to find something beautiful to do with it. And then over here is another one of my sculptures. I love her, my Mother Nature sculpture. In behind her, you can kind of see one of the outlets I was telling you about that Jason and I hydro dipped. They're all a little different. And then this cabinet is where I keep my mediums. And of course, I have some fun little collectibles on top. Axl Rose, <laughs> Bob Ross. And Vincent Van Gogh because they were all artists really. No, actually, I just ran out of room on my other shelf and I got to find a better place for them. But in here is where I keep all my mediums and spray paint and things like that. And of course, varnishes. So they're just kept safe in there. I have a little bit of everything in there. All right. And then this is my water source up here. And this is my other shelf that has my my fun little Funko Pop dolls. So we got the Golden Girls, we got a little bit of Frasier, a little bit of Rugrats, Hocus Pocus, Home Alone, and Pirates of the Caribbean. Now we'll swing over here. I have my Hope chest from when I was a kid. A monkey, because that's what my husband calls me. And he actually won that for me at the fair. I love it. And then over here is basically my craft area. And on this wall in my craft area, I have a couple of fun signs that have my artwork on them from Ampersand. They actually use some of my artwork for their for sale signs a couple times. And they sent me some copies, so I thought that was pretty cool. And then a little bit further down the wall are a couple of projects I did in school. This is one of my favorite paintings from school. At the end of our painting class, my professor would bring in all kinds of fun treats from Duncan and have us set up a still life and paint them. And I made that in class. So I have a giant painting of donuts. And this was all done in one sitting. So my purple donut's a little lopsided, but that's fine. She tasted great, trust me. And then below that, is the map that I designed for downtown Augusta, Maine. This again ended up being another project for school. Same professor, this was actually earlier on than the donuts, but we all had to design a walking map for downtown Augusta, Maine. And 
Then they brought it to the Augusta Downtown Alliance and they voted and they chose mine for the inside of the map. And the outside of the map actually has my friend Dakota's artwork on it. So, yep, my artwork is the walking map for downtown Augusta. As far as I know, they're still using it. I believe they're still using it, but here's a copy of it. And yeah, so I was super proud of that. So I hung that on the wall. So this table is on wheels. I recommend anytime you do a studio, get things that are on wheels. I will be moving this to my main working station when I want to use it. So I work on a drafting table, which you'll see soon. But when I am working on crafts, I like to work flat. And so that's what this table is going to be for. She has a little leaf that comes out and can be out. And I have my jewelry making supplies stored in here because I love to make jewelry. I haven't a lot lately, but that's what that's for. And then on this cart, I have my stationary notepads, paper, and stuff like that down below. I have my rags, my spare trash bags, some wipes, some gloves, you know, cleaning supplies. And then in here, you're going to be seeing all this soon. This is stuff that I have set aside that I plan on reviewing. So this is the art supplies I haven't used yet. And then I have another diorama that I made in school to paint from. Kind of looks like the field that me and my best friends used to play in when we were little. And then in here I have some kind of spare ends, some crafts and bips and bobs and stuff like that. Ribbon, things like that. And then this shelf is where I keep all the main crafting supplies that I'm going to be using more often. I call this my shelf of hoard. <laughs> Lindsay, the frugal crafter, has the room of hoard. I have the shelf of hoard. And this is just all kinds of fun memories, things that my sister has made me. Some Funko dolls that I brought out of the package before I realized I should. Things I made when I was little, like this clay pot and this little heart. They all have some special memory involved though. And then on this shelf is where I keep my craft paint, mostly apple barrel. I also have some pigments here and wood, gr glass, and tile crafts. And look at that. This is where I got my name. I made this painting and this painting was named Caution Artists at Play years and years ago, back in like 2011. It's an acrylic painting. And then that's what became my logo. That's what I named my Facebook page after. And that's why my channel is named what it is. And I love it. And I love that she has a beautiful spot in the studio. And then down below on this shelf, I have things like candle making things, all that fun stuff, my toolkit. And then this is mostly like plaster, clay, glass, and stuff like that. Then on this shelf, I have some fun art kits, some of my porcelain dolls from when I was a kid, kids' art supplies, Sharpies, and then other crafting supplies that I'm likely to use, like fun little acorns, things like that, my stamps, and then things like stickers, glitter, all that fun stuff. And then below, I have some prints, some hand side prints, and this is basically boxes of boxes, bags of bags, my scale, basically the business shipping side of things, some tissue paper, some business cards, and things like that. Okay, now we're coming to the main event. This is it. This is my main working area. I'm so excited. I will show you more closely in a minute, but this is where the magic is going to happen, and I'm really, really excited. So, here we go. Okay, so starting on the outer edges and then working my way around. I have my little tabaret here. I just keep this over here when I'm not working. And then I wheel it over next to my chair when I'm working on a project. That way there I can have my palette on it or my basket of colored pencils, things like that. Got this fairly inexpensively on Amazon. And she's just the perfect height for my short little chair, which had to be short so it could go under my desk. She's white, she's pretty, she's precious, she's tiny, and she's going to probably be wrecked within two weeks of working up here. But that's okay. And then up here, I have my 
basket that I keep my most used art supplies in. Like basically I keep this stuff out all the time for when I'm working in colored pencil. And then when I am actively working in colored pencil, I'll keep the colors I'm using in this basket so that I have them set aside. And then I have this fun little rainbow craft cart. This has erasers, sandpaper and blenders, tape, cutting implements, cleaning supplies, glue, office supplies, kind of like um, electronic office supplies, I guess. And then this is my framing drawer. And then this just has some pens and stuff. My fun little hot pink trash can because I'm a classy broad like that. And then this little, this is just like a TV stand and I put some contact paper over it a long time ago. And I have my sharpener on here. I also have a Derwent manual super point sharpener, but that's in my living room right now from when I was working there. And then this is my electric sharpener. I love her. The Exacto School Pro. And then this is where I put my jewelry when I am working so it doesn't get ruined. When I remember to take it off. Then this fun little pen holder has some of the pens I like to use the most, and then just some fun pens. I love these colorful um, mechanical pencils for preliminary outlines. And then I have this fun table that I got at Hobby Lobby a long time ago, back when I shopped there. Looks like a paint palette. I'm loving it. This is where I'm going to put my janky ass laptop. <laughs> So that I can have reference photos right next to my drawing table. And then I have this arm here so that I can do some filming at fun angles. Then my fun little bird brain friend. My mom made this years ago and I love birds. And so I thought it'd be cool to have him kind of nesting right there. And then there's my drawing table. I actually designed the top of this. I bought the table. And then I redid the surface because I wanted it to look a lot like my coffee table, which you've seen in the background of my videos lately. And I actually had painted that coffee table as well a few, well, probably 10 years ago now. But, and then I shellac the heck out of it with a matte shellac so that it doesn't chip the way my coffee table has been. It's not very clear here. It's really hard with the lighting. I only have one window for natural light and it's at the opposite end. This window back here. It's beautiful, it's fun, it opens out, but it doesn't have a screen and it doesn't have glass. And so I can't have it open all the time because of bugs and rain and things like that. And so I really had to rely on lighting. And that's one reason why we painted these walls white because it used to be really super dark in here. And I'll pop up a picture of this working area back before it was redone. It was super difficult to get the brightness I wanted. But anyway, so... This is my desk and I love it. She's beautiful. She's got gold and cream and this video is not doing it justice. It looks much better in person. And then you can kind of see how I have it set up to film. I have this contraption that I put together. Basically, this is the holder for a backdrop for photography. And I put that together and then I bought this Manfrotto arm and this really rugged clamp so that I could have it go over my table because I had to get really creative for an overhead view since I work on a slanted desk. And so there's that. And then I have this fantastic light. I, again, I will try to link these things. I need one of these for my easel. And then I also have this arm to help film when I'm working on my easel. This is one of my favorite artworks. This is by my friend Becky Pass. She and I actually graduated together. We shared a senior thesis exhibition and she's a fantastic artist and she made this for me for my birthday. So I had to frame it and put it in a beautiful place in the studio. And yeah, I, I love it. I will link her Instagram below, but, and here's my little H frame. She was not that expensive. Um, I think it's a Da Vinci. I believe we got it from like Jerry's or Blick or something like that. My husband bought it for me, but I had it on a wish list. Love it. And it fits perfectly in this area. So, you know, cause I don't have a lot of space, especially with these slanted walls. That was one of the main challenges, especially with decorating, but also with shelving, I have slanted walls. And so it was hard to find shelving that would fit and, you know, furniture that would fit. But I've had this for a really long time as well. Because I actually worked up here a lot before. It just wasn't aesthetically pleasing up here. And the light, oh, it was just so dark. 
And then I have some tabletop easels down there that I store down there. Below the easel, I have my travel easel. And then I do have a protective mat down to protect the flooring. Some sound panels. Up here, I have this fun little sign that I made. What is the meaning of this? I thought it'd be fun to put it next to the easel while I'm working. And then, of course, the tapestry. My husband got me the Monet tapestry. Beautiful. And then there's this beast. My nephews actually gave this to me, and it came at a really good time because I was looking for a place that could house my paint because I used to have just one of those really cheap plastic drawer set things. It was about the same size, but it didn't hold up well because it couldn't hold up the weight. So let's take a look inside, and this is just going to be a quick look, but if you want to have a more thorough art supply, like, haul video or tour video, I guess, just let me know in the comments below. So this is where I keep my brushes and my whole lines, and it kind of goes, like, I, it doesn't look very orderly, but it is. They are separated. I have, like, my small rounds, then my larger rounds, then my small flats, my larger flats, and filberts. And then just like specialty brushes, like fan brushes and things like that. And then I have a couple spare packs over here of my Holbein brushes. Palette knives, large brushes, things like that. And then this drawer is my acrylics. This is the heftiest drawer of all. Probably should have put this on bottom. But anyway, I have like my medium body here. My heavy body is in back. My larger ones that don't fit standing up some sets of acrylics, my open acrylics. And then this is actually three layers. I used some colored pencil tins that I'm not using for my actual colored pencils anymore and organized them by color. So this goes to green, then there's another layer below it that has purples and blues. And then below that, there's like earth tones, like browns, black, white, things like that. And then this drawer is my water media drawer. So I have my Holbein acrylic gouache, my regular gouache, like in here, there's, this whole thing is filled with gouache. There's a box down here that has my tubed watercolor in it, and then you can see various palettes of watercolors and things like that. Also, I have my casein in there as well. And then my oil paints, which is slightly more organized because I don't have as many of those. And so I have my Duo Aqua oil by Holbein back there and then my fast drying is in the back next to that and then these are all regular oils and I just bought these little baskets at Target. These along with the big baskets that you saw in my craft area those are all from Target. Fairly inexpensive and I love them. And then I have this fun set, drawer set and you've probably seen this on my Instagram. I just love these so much. My sister got this for me. This actually came from Etsy. Um, the artist is Joyful Clay. I will link that below as well. I will try to remember to link everything that I can. And then let me tell you, these Holbein acrylic inks, these are a bop. Man, I love these. I will be getting more soon, but this is where I keep my, my high flow acrylics for when I'm airbrushing. And I have my airbrush here. And plus... I gotta have some paint out. It's just beautiful. And then, of course, the same with the pencils. And then, in these drawers, I have my graphite, other inks. This is, like, printmaking and scratch board art, things like that. And then, this is just different tools, you know. We have the, the color wheel, measurement implements, and of course, stencils, things like that, mannequins, and then my charcoal. And then in this cabinet, I have just a bunch of various things. The top shelf has basically my blow dryers. I have my wood burner, an etching gun, a soldering iron, this has my mask for when I'm airbrushing or spray painting, goggles, other masks, some spare pencils, my graphite, my powdered graphite because I had no room in my graphite drawer. And then I have old printmaking plates. This just keeps 
you know, a spare light. This is a mic that doesn't work very well, hence the fact that I'm not using it. And then this is where I keep all my pamphlets that come with my art supplies in case I need to reference light fast ratings or anything like that. All right. And then my color cubes. You've probably seen that video. Oh, God, I love those. And my Bob Ross. There's a video on my channel for that. And this, folks, this is one of my favorite shelves. This is my colored pencil and pastel shelf. So I keep all my colored pencils in here. All the way down. It goes like mostly regular colored pencils. And then it comes into watercolor pencils, ink tents, things like that. And then into pastel pencils and pastels. My oil pastels. Down here, I keep my markers. So those fun paint markers that I love. Some Winsor Newton markers. Some acrylic markers. And then these are my pit pens. And my Albrecht Durer watercolor markers. Because those are the markers that I use the most. This, this came from my friends Nick and Lynn. They actually brought these back from Hawaii for me. I love them. I want to display them better. I haven't figured out how. And then I have my crayons. These are the Neo Color 2 and the Krita Color ones. Water soluble and then my regular non-water soluble are up here. And then I keep things like Conti crayons, pan pastels, and things like that in these drawers. And these are old cassette tape drawers. These were my grandmother's from when she had cassettes. And I love how well these work for my crayons. I mean, they even separate the crayons and stuff. And so kind of repurpose those. And then down here, I have various pastels and I have some fun pencil sets. This one's from Generals. This is, I love this set. It was so much fun to play with. My old Prismacolor set that was made the year I was born. And this is like my junk drawer, but in basket form. And so these are my brushes that haven't been opened yet. Um, spare palettes, watercolor pans, and things like that. So if I run out of a brush that I love, I usually have spare over here. But yeah. So this is it. This is the working area. Let me know what you what you like the most about the studio. I like that I have little stations and uh, I'm just so happy that it's done. So feel free to comment below and let me know what you think. So that's it. That's the studio. I hope that you like it. I love it. I'm super excited. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week. You have a fantastic day. Bye. I mean, I don't know if you know this, but this is actually my dance floor. <laughs>